So the, the story I will uh, tell you about today, what was, is about our journey in completely uncharted uh, territory, uh, I'm, I will tell you about an enzyme involved in the catabolism of pyrimidines that apparently is necessary to protect uh, uh, tumor cell lines from replication problems, probably induced by uh, pyrimidine catabolites. And this all started uh, from a familiar place as we were looking for proteins that associate with the uh, Funchem. As you know, Funchem is a, a large DNA translocase that plays multiple roles uh, that are key to the maintenance of uh, chromosomal stability. Uh, we had shown in the past that Funchem binds branch DNA molecules such as replication forks and can translocate the branch point in an ATPase dependent manner. This is also a very big protein that uh, uh, anchors several DNA caretaker proteins to chromatin. For instance, Andrew Dean in Steve's lab had shown that uh, von Kem uh, anchors the FA co-complex and the Bloom syndrome complex to DNA damage sites via two evolutionary conserved motifs, MMM1 and MMM2, that associate respectively with the von Kef and RME1. So we took MMM3 as bait in a two hybrid screen and retrieved dehydropyrimidinase as a likely funchem interacting uh, protein. So what is it? This is a tetrameric metalloenzyme that is implicated in the second step of pyrimidine degradation. So this is uh, how pyrimidine degradation works. Uracil and thymine are first reduced by dehydropyrimidine dehydrogenase so this saturates the ring, so the base has lost coding properties and is unstable, and the ring is opened by dehydropyrimidinase, and the product is then further degraded by radiopropionase. This pyrimidine catabolic pathway is key uh, for the response of tumors to treatment with 5-fluorouracil, because it degrades also 5-fluorouracil. You know how it works. It's converted to an anti-metabolite by cellular enzymes into fluoronucleotides that will misincorporate into RNA, DNA, and block the midilat synthetase. So we were also pursuing our systematic characterization of proteins that accumulate in the vicinity of uh, uh, replication forks in cells exposed to various chemotherapeutic agents using this uh, beautiful method that has been developed by the Cortez Laboratory. And uh, within this screen, actually, we identify Funchem as a protein enriched at forks upon exposure to 5-fluorouracil. Actually, it was the first time we detected Funchem near forks using an unbiased screen. So we were motivated to f pursue this further. And uh, first we uh, verify whether the two proteins can indeed associate. So the two proteins, FUNCHEM and DHP for short, for dehydropyrimidinase, were co-expressed in insect cells. So we could pull down uh, uh, funk, uh, DHP with a flag tag uh, FUNCHEM. We could also pull down antigenous DHP from uh, human cells that express FLAC-TAC from CHEM. Uh, reciprocally, we could pull down from CHEM, endogenous from CHEM, with uh, uh, an endogenous DHP using an anti-DHP antibody. And we have other immunoprecipitation. Basically, we validated this association uh, uh, using a reciprocal IP of both endogenous recombinant proteins expressed in mammalian and insect cells. But yet we were concerned that this association could be induced by the, the breakage of cellular compartments because uh, dehydropyrimidinase is mainly described as a cytoplasmic protein and Funchem is chromatin-associated. So we perform biochemical cell fractionation and probe for endogenous uh, DHP, which localize in the cytoplasm. But you see you have a subfraction in the chromatin fraction. And we also detected a recombinant MIG tag uh, DHP uh, with an anti MIG antibody in the chromatin fraction. So there is a, a subpopulation of DHP in chromatin, and you see that the, the signal corresponding to DHP in chromatin is lost upon the knockdown of von Chem, whereas it is, remains intact in the cytosolic fraction, suggesting that von Chem anchors a subfraction of dehydropyrimidinase to chromatin. 
And consistent with this, we found that uh, DHP can associate with FunCam when FunCam is bound to DNA. So we had shown previously that FunCam binds branch DNA molecules, and you could show that using uh, uh, gel retardation. So we have a synthetic replication fork that is 5' unlabeled, and we uh, purified FunCam and DHP uh, from insect cells and then incubated these proteins with a substrate. So these were migrates the free probe. Upon incubation with FunCam, you have formation of FunCam uh, DNA complex of retarded mobility. DHP on its own has no affinity for this structure, but when both proteins are co-expressed, you see a second band, a further retarded mobility that could correspond to FunCam DHP DNA complexes. And consistent with this, if you uh, uh, label a three prime, uh, five prime with biotin, the substrate, you can pull it down with biotinylated with a streptavidin beads, and we pull down the HP with the substrate only when it was co-expressed with Funchem, but not alone. But I have to say DHP had absolutely no impact on the biochemical activity of FunCam, its branch migration activity. So if this association serves any function, the only one I can propose is that FunCam incurs a subfraction of DHP to chromatin. But this could be important, as you will see in my very last slide. So... <laughs> What is the hydropyrimidinase? Well, this, this enzyme is primarily expressed in the liver and the kidney. There is hardly any detectable dehydropyrimidinase activity in extrahepatic and kidney tissues. By contrast, dehydropyrimidinase is uh, striking activity is strikingly high in carcinoma of the uh, sorry of uh, uh, the lung, pancreas, colon, and, and stomach. This is a pioneering study that had shown that, suggesting that the tumorigenic state is associated with the reactivation of dehydropyrimidinase. You you need to hydrolyze dehydropyrimidines. And another link between dehydropyrimidines and cancer was uh, published more recently. The the, the base itself. The, is apparently sufficient to induce the acquisition of more aggressive cancer traits via a mechanism that is not yet uh, uh, uncovered, uh, the so-called epitheliomesenchymal transition. Accumulation also of 5 uracil has been described as a characteristic uh, uh, signature metabolite of early lung adenocarcinoma. So it seems that this uh, uh, pyrimidine catabolism pathway is rewired in the context of, of tumors. And actually, we can detect DHP uh, in our cell lines. We generated an antibody, so we detect DHP in 293 cells, by its kidney derived, but also in U2S cells, in HCT116 cells, and, and the signal is reduced if we treat with SI or SH, so it's a specific DHP signal. So what happens if you lose the hydropyrimidinase? Well, the hydropyrimidinase deficiency is a rare inborn in disorder characterized by an accumulation of the uh, hydropyrimidines in body fluids, in the blood, urine, cerebral, spinal fluids. And some patients are asymptomatic, but most of them have mental retardation, hypotonia, seizures, growth, growth retardation, dysmorphic features, and gastrointestinal problems. And obviously, they would be hypersensitive to 5-fluorouracil. And there has been also a cat with the hydropyrimidinase deficiency described, and the cat uh, suffered from malnutrition, uh, depression, uh, uh, severe problems. So it seems that the accumulation of these dehydropyrimidines is, is toxic, at least uh, for the nervous system. So we set out to explore what's the consequence of uh, depleting uh, DHP in our cell lines. So uh, here we used uh, uh, SI to knock down DHP new to S cells, or uh, plasmid was transfecting, encoding SH with a different target sequence in DHP in 293 T cells. And in both situations, you see that the suppression of DHP severely alters the distribution of cells into the cell cycle. The proportion of cells in S phase is diminished. So then we pulse label with BRDU to follow the progression of these cells through the cell cycle and then perform a time course analysis by uh, two-dimensional uh, uh, flow cytometry. So these uh, normal cells progressing towards uh, G2 and then back to G1 and S phase. And you see that this progression is delayed in cells that lack DHP. You have accumulation of cells in, in G2 and then uh, G1. 
And actually, if you wait for several days, you see that the absence of DHP in uh, U2OS and 293T cells severely compromise their growth, as revealed by colon information assay and crystal violet staining. So then we uh, looked at the progression of replication folks in DHP depleted cells and uh, uh, observed that using a, a, a dual labeling fiber methodology you are now familiar with, I guess, measure the length of uh, replication tracks. And well, you see that these replication tracks are much shorter in cells that lack DHP, both in 293T, U2OS cells, and actually we could partially complement this phenotype by uh, co-expressing uh, SI-resistant uh, MIGTAG DHP. So you have to compare these lanes and these lanes, you restore a bit of uh, folk progression, suggesting that this impairment in folk progression is a direct consequence of the loss of DHP. We observed also an accumulation of P53 uh, in DHP depleted cells, in U2S cells, and this again, these levels were reduced by uh, co expressing a SI resistant DHP, suggesting that the, the, the stabilization is a direct uh, consequence of the depletion of DHP. <coughs> Uh, probably as a result of uh, unresolved conflicts, and these conflicts could be replication stress because folks uh, slow down. So we look for evidences of uh, ATR uh, checkpoint signaling and looked for phosphorylated substrate, and we observed uh, more check one phosphorylation in the soluble fraction of DHP depleted cells and more RPA phosphorylation in the chromatin fraction of these cells. Likewise, by immunofluorescent staining, we detected an accumulation of uh, RPA foci in DHP depleted cells and of phosphor RPA uh, foci also. I'm not showing you all the pictures. And uh, uh, finally, we also uniformly uh, label cells with BRDU uh, to detect single-strand DNA because uh, BRDU is uh, detected only when it is in a single-strand DNA form. So we perform this detection in native conditions and uh, we observe much more BRDU for site that is uh, large regions of single-strand DNA in cells that lack DHP. So, uh, uh, so far I've told you that depletion of DHP severely uh, compromised DNA replication, induced stress, and replication catastrophes. So is it due to uh, the loss of the protein itself or to the accumulation of dehydropyrimidines? So to answer this question, we co-depleted dehydropyrimidine dehydrogenase, the first enzyme in this uh, pyrimidine catabolism step, reasoning that if we don't produce the substrate that is degraded by uh, dehydropyrimidinase, then we may not need the enzyme. So as you can see, uh, uh, so DPYD is the lowest band. The big fat one is a contaminant. So we co-depleted uh, co DPYD and DHP, and you see that uh, removal of dehydropyrimidine dehydrogenase restore uh, 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 normal P53 level in DHP depleted cells. And likewise, uh, uh, um, depletion of DPYD in DHP depleted cells uh, restores partially, uh, prevents the accumulation of RPA foci. <coughs> and, uh, and finally, you see that the progression of replication folks in DHP depleted cells was rescued by co depleting dehydropyrimidine dehydrogenase. So it seems that the accumulation of dehydropyrimidines are themselves responsible for these uh, replication-associated problems. So the qu last question is, is why, uh, and one question uh, we ask is uh, whether dehydropyrimidines, uh, uh, these bases themselves, are uh, genotoxic. So according to uh, the famous review by Thomas Lindahl in 1993 on the spontaneous decay of uh, DNA, uh, these uh, saturated uh, rings uh, uh, have lost aromaticity, are unstable, and probably subjected to further decompositions. And I was wondering whether decomposition products could perhaps be reactive and damage DNA, unless the base inhibits a DNA repair enzyme. Actually, uh, we're not chemists, so I cannot answer this question. But we looked for indirect evidences that this could induce DNA damage. 
And what we observe that in, is that in DHP depleted cells, we have an accumulation of a polymerase eta in chromatin. And as you know, uh, uh, polymerase eta is a translation DNA polymerase that helps to bypass damaged DNA during DNA replication. Poleta uh, bypasses UV photoproducts and some form of oxidated uh, bases. And the switch between a normal DNA polymerase and a TLS is induced by the monoubiquitination of PCNA. And as you can see, we have strong uh, PCNA monoubiquitination in DHP uh, depleted cells. And another indirect evidence that this dihydropyrimidine cause problem came from uh, uh, exploration of the effect of uh, dihydrouracil on DNA replication in Xenopus uh, egg extract. So we used a very simple classical system where we just add uh, circular single-strand DNA to Xenopus egg extract, and then uh, DNA synthesis will be prime and DNA chain elongation will be ongoing. And you do that in the presence of a radio label DCTP, uh, so you can measure the incorporation of, uh, of DCTP. And when we add dihydrouracil to this xenopusic extract, we see a stimulation of DCTP incorporation. Uh, if we run the product on a gel, on a native gel, so you see a supercoil DNA, uh, the open circular form, and a bit more signal, in, in the presence of dihydrouracil, but no major differences. But we saw uh, a marked difference is when we were pulse labeling the extract with DCTP and then running the products in denaturing conditions on an alkaline gel. Here you see the normal products during the first uh, 30 minutes of replication. And, and here you see appearing a new replication intermediates in extract that have been complemented with uh, dihydrouracil. So I don't know what is this substrate. I guess we need to do electron microscopy, but this is a band of re uh, retarded mobility in, in, in alkaline conditions. And this is indicative of some form of replication problems directly induced by the dihydrouracil. So, uh, so far I've told you that uh, 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 in, in cancers, the, the pyrimidine catabolism pathway is rewired, and dihydropyrimidine seems to accumulate. And I show you some indirect evidence that dihydropyrimidines may cause DNA damage, either directly or indirectly, using via mechanism that remains to be defined. Uh, what is quite remarkable, I believe, is that uh, I show you that the, the, these cells, at least in our cell culture condition, produce sufficient amounts of dihydropyrimidine to significantly uh, slow down the progression of FOX to induce uh, P53 stabilization, with the phosphorylation of RP of check one, and basically to severely compromise the growth of these cells. And uh, so dihydropyrimidine is, is probably a target to consider uh, uh, in therapies. So these dihydropyrimidines are degraded by dihydropyrimidinase, which primarily locate in the cytoplasm, but I show you that there is a subfraction of DHP that locates to chromatin in a funchem dependent manner. And uh, perhaps funchem uh, links replisome surveillance with uh, protection of the environment for the potential uh, noxious uh, 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 compound. Obviously, in the absence of Funchem, you would still have plenty of DHP in the cytoplasm to degrade dihydropyrimidines, but this may help optimize uh, the situation and the production. So uh, this is the last piece of evidence. It's just the last uh, experiment we did very recently. Apparently, there is a flavonoid called dihydromyricetin that can uh, block dihydropyrimidinase, at least a prokaryotic dihydropyrimidinase. So we need to verify the, whether the human dihydropyrimidinase is also inhibited by dihydromyricetin. But uh, as you can see, and actually it's, uh, it's sold as a product to protect against a hangover, uh, so it could be <laughs> useful. But uh, <laughs> in any case, you see a slightly increased sensitivity of funcam depleted cells to dihydromyricetin compared to control cells, suggesting that this subfraction in chromatin could indeed be important. So all, all this work was done by uh, Jian Basbu, 
who was quite courageous because this was completely uncharted territory. So we went through a lot of uh, questions. And uh, for the uh, Xenopus experiments, we were uh, helped by uh, Domenico Majorano team and Marcel Meschali, who basically provided us with the Xenopus egg extract and advised us as to how to conduct our experiments. And uh, I'd like uh, to thank also our sponsors and uh, you very much for your attention. Thank you.